by keeping it real video series. These videos will focus on self-defense against some of the most common attacks. I will not only demonstrate the techniques, but I'll also be giving you some instructions on how best to use these and show you some variations as well as some training methods that will definitely increase your confidence and the reliability of your response to an attack. To be effective, your training must be realistic and should include fear and stress management, which is very important to keeping it real. It's important to mention also that some of these techniques that I'm going to be demonstrating, they're what I call possible examples of a response or an EPR. They're just examples, nothing more. All self-defense situations are dynamic and ever-changing, so you must be able to adjust to the uniqueness of your situation to be successful. This material will benefit anyone who's interested in self-defense, but will be of particular interest to anyone who is studying or practicing Okinawan Goju Ryu Karate, due to the references I'll be making to Kata and Bunkai which is the application of our kata techniques. It is my hope that the video will also encourage viewers with no training to seek proper instruction under a qualified instructor. And then you can learn the many benefits that the martial arts has to offer. Okay, let's get started. As the title says, this video is about keeping it real. What do I mean by that, keeping it real? Keeping it real means that your training should be as realistic as possible. So, for instance, this is not realistic. When you're doing your technique and one person gets back like this and stands like this and then steps forward and does that and stands there and waits for you to do your technique, this is not realistic. This is not realistic, is it? So, but it has its place, especially with beginners. By standing like this, the person knows what hand is coming, right? He knows you're gonna step forward, you're gonna do a right-handed punch, okay? So that way there's less chance of a, of a mistake and the person getting injured trying the technique because you should start slow, right? So that's okay, so it has its uh, important points. But nobody's doing that out there. Nobody's getting ready like this, and then stepping there and standing there like that while you're doing your moves, okay? Things are happening fast, there is no stance, right? And the person that's doing the technique normally is standing there like this, waiting for the move to come. Again, that's not very realistic, okay? If you're standing in front of somebody that's an aggressor, that's potentially going to attack you, this is the last place you wanna be. You, wanna, you don't wanna be standing like this. Okay? You want to stand bladed. If you're right-handed, you would probably stand this way. If you're left-handed, you would probably stand this way. I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's up to you, up to the individual. right? But you don't want to stand like this because now you have no balance. You can easily be pushed over. right? And you don't want to have your hands down here. Not realistic. If I have an aggressor in front of me, I'm going to immediately stand in a different posture and now if you're if they are at a distance I could stand with my hands down here but if the moment they start getting a little bit closer my hands need to come up a little higher now I don't have to do I'm never going to do this we never want to do that because this means let's fight this means hey hey wait a minute I don't want any trouble guys hold on hold on I don't care if you don't speak my language this, everybody knows around the world, means hold on, wait a minute, okay? This means let's fight. Now, I don't wanna fight, so my hands are gonna be like so, but I'm not gonna stand this way. And this is not gonna happen unless you're really getting into my personal space and I'm gonna have to tell you to back up, okay? But this I can do comfortably and not look like I'm being an aggressor. Or here, this is okay. You know, or you can check your hair, right? But from this position, your hands are in a better place to defend yourself than down here. Okay. So that's the first thing. The other thing is, 
Any violent situation is gonna be stressful. Everybody's gonna be dealing with stress. Your heart rate is going to increase. The minute your heart rate goes over 150 beats a minute, you lose fine motor skills. You find it challenging to do certain things. So, in the dojo, you have to reenact that or duplicate that feeling of stress. And there are a number of ways of doing it. One way, to get that heart rate up. So, you know what a burpee is, guys? Everybody knows what a burpee is. Do 20 burpees. By the time you finish your 20 burpees, trust me, you'll be, you'll be breathing like that. And then the person attacks you. Can you still perform? <laughs> Can you still perform, right? This is the key. So you first, of course, you have to practice the techniques and the moves and stuff. And when you've got a great understanding, a good understanding of the moves, then you got to add the stress. So you do your burpees or whatever it is that gets that heart rate up, and then your partner attacks you. But he attacks you in a more realistic way, not like this, right? He might come over to you and push you. And, and oh, okay, now then, and then when he comes again, all right, now you're gonna have to start doing something, all right? Another way of increasing the stress would be to maybe uh, turn a strobe light on and, and have the strobe light flashing in your face. And then the guy attacks you. Turn the lights down. Turn the music, put some music on, blast it. Maybe you're in a club, right? Blast the music. Strobe lights are flashing. Now the attack is coming. So these are ways that you can train to make your response more natural and see whether or not you can respond under those conditions. Also, take it out of the dojo. Go outside someplace when you're not on such level ground, you know, where there's obstacles around you things on the ground, you know? This also will assist in keeping it real. See whether or not you can uh, respond appropriately when you've got this different, all of this other stimulus going on. Yeah. These are, this is important. This is a, a part of testing yourself under different situations. So, that's what I mean by keeping it real. Also, when you're doing technique in the dojo, can I borrow you from? In the dojo, we're very respectful, right? He's here, out to each other. And what today we're going to work on a defense against somebody grabbing you, coming to grab you like that. This is what we're going to work on today. Now, when the, when the person comes to grab, I'm going to respond like this, right? Now, when you hit somebody in the groin, what normally happens? That happens. That's a predetermined response. Nobody gets hit here and does that, right? They, <laughs> they get hit and they go down this way, right? So, he comes again, I make him go down, I grab the head, knee. Okay, from here, I can pop this arm if I want, push him away, and I'm, I'm, go I'm going, I'm finished. In the dojo, sometimes we have a, a tendency to want to overkill the person. <laughs> I mean, it's okay in the dojo, but understand, if it's a real situation, this fight could be over now. I've hit him in the groin, usually when you hit somebody under, they do this. Oh. While he's doing that, I'm going, I'm, I'm leaving, I'm going home. I have no need to do anything else to this guy. This fight's over. So anything more than that is extra, okay? Now let's say, I'll come again. He come here, he didn't bend, maybe he didn't bend over. No problem, I grab him, pull that, pull him into this. Now from here, I could trap this leg, come back here with that leg, trap this leg, and push him and make him go down and take off, okay? But it's not necessary to
do a hundred techniques to the guy. You know, that's all you need to do is to hurt him and leave. That reminds me of something else now. <laughs> when you're doing self-defense against an attacker, you should use all weapons available to you. It's not about, oh, I'm gonna, I'm a black belt, I can handle this guy, and I'm gonna do this without a weapon. Bullshit. If you have a superior weapon, you pull it out and you end the situation. This is it, it's over. You don't have a weapon, uh, you're on a chair, you got a stool, you pick up the chair, you hit him with a head, you go, you go home. This is smart, this is not, you know, it's not about, you're not in the movies, you're not trying to impress anybody with your skills. You wanna go home safe to your family and you must do what's necessary. And if that means, picking up a table and crashing it over the guy's head. That's what it means. Yeah. There's another uh, thing about, especially in karate, we have this, this uh, principle, very popular, karate ni sente nashi. That means that uh, roughly it translates to, there's no first strike in karate. It should not be thought to mean that you should wait for the person to attack you before you respond, okay? Yes, I know, every kata begins with a defensive movement, yes, yes, but if you invade in my space and I've told you, hey, don't, that's close enough, don't come any closer, and you come at me with bad intentions, I'm gonna respond immediately. I'm not gonna wait for you to throw the punch or reach for the gun or the knife or whatever. If you're coming into my space and I've told you not to come, that's close enough, you're already assaulting me. So I'm gonna take it to you. Now, those of you that uh, practice goju ryu karate, you know that we have a lot of kata that begin like this, yes? How many? Many. Sanchi. Tensho, Shisochi, Sanseru. All of those moves, those, those, watch, is a step forward and hands coming out, right? I'm not doing this. I'm not going backwards. I'm going forward. So that means you are meeting, you are intercepting what's coming. And this is the spirit with which you must perform your, your self-defense technique. You must go forward with intention and meet this attack before it gets overwhelming for you. Okay, does this make sense? So, and, and this motion of bringing the arms up like that, it covers left and right attacks. Don't matter if the guy's left hand or right hand, both hands are going up, yeah? So this is like uh, the flinch reaction we, everyone has naturally. When something's hit, coming towards your head, everyone does that, it's, you don't have to be taught. So what we want to do is weaponize the flinch. So this could be our flinch, but we're going in with it. We're not going backwards. We're not cowering away from the attack. We're meeting it and we're coming in for it. Yeah? Now what we do when we go in, that's a different story. Of course, everything's situation is going to be different. So these techniques that I'll be demonstrating are just examples of possible responses. Nothing written in stone here. You have to be able to adapt to what's going on in, the, in your situation, because every situation is different. You don't know what the guy's gonna do. So you have to, in, in Bruce Lee's words, be like water, right? You put water in a cup, it becomes a cup, right? So you have to adapt to whatever's going on at the time. So let's look at some variations of this move that we just did. So like I said, this guy is a uh, uh, threatening, so I'm not gonna stand like this. I'm like, hey man, I, I don't want no trouble, guy. You know, so I'm already got my posture, my hands are up, not down here. 
And I'm telling them, I don't want any trouble. Now you say this so that uh, people around might hear you and they'll know you don't want to fight. He's the one that's the aggressor. So you're immediately getting to making that clear to people. And especially if you go, if you do that, put your hands up like you want to, yeah, if he's doing that and I'm doing this, then you're, I'm saying, hey, 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 I don't want no trouble. I've got, I've got witnesses now that can say, oh yes, he didn't want to fight. He had his hands up. He said, no, wait, but this guy wanted to, now we both did this. Yeah, then it's a mutual engagement now. It's like, okay, let's do this. I don't want to be there. So this is why. And your hands open doesn't mean that you can't do damage, right? So when he came to grab me, this is what I did, slowly. The hand came in, all I did was this, yeah? So now, for those of you that do go Julia or any martial art, you know that's a low block motion, right? Low block motion. I had my hand open, but my hands could be closed. So if he came, I could do it hand closed, hit, hand open, hit, I can hit this way or that way, doesn't matter, right? Oh, by the way, notice I'm stepping on the foot. Always, when we're close, always step on the foot. Because now I have control of him now. If I push him down right now, he, his ankle would snap because I'm stopping his foot from lifting. So when practicing now in the dojo, if, the, if I did push him down, I would let the foot go because I like it. <laughs> so once again, he comes, I did this, here. Now, I could also from here, grab this arm, take this leg out. Right? Then I got here. Oh, look what I have here. Okay. Same, mo let's look, we're only talking about this one motion today. So. This one motion, now I'm also, I'm standing so this way in front of him. If he comes with this hand, this hand is the closest to it, right? I'm not going to go back. I'm not going to, no, no. If he comes with this hand, I'm not going to go like that, right? So if this hand comes, I do this. If the other hand comes, I do the same thing. Only difference is now I'm on the inside. So when you're on the inside, now, oh, here, oh, here, oh, here. Okay? So let's do that again. Here, here, one, oh, here, pop, boom around, here. Do you have to do all of that? No. It could end, this, hand, it, it, this could end it, that could end it. I'm gone, I'm finished, fight over. He got hit here, he got hit here, oh. What, what else do I need, why? Anything really more is extra and might be excessive, okay? I could also do that, same move, yeah? same move. When I just add his shoulder to bump him, push him away, then I can get away, get out of there. No need to hang around. I mean, of course, men have a problem. Men have a problem because they, they think they, they look like a chicken if they run. <laughs> okay? Uh, oh, oh, that's why they get off in each other's face, you know. And nose to nose, that's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. So this, you definitely want to avoid that. Your objective is to get home safe, not to prove anything to anybody. So let's look at this move again. This hand, this hand come, this one. One, this one way, right? He comes again, this time, oh, I grab the finger now, and now I can break this finger by going that way with it, right? And knee attack, right? Or, come again, and go under the arm. Here. Now I'm in a, he's in a shoulder lock now, and I can apply pressure here. Easy. Let's say this hand came. This time I grab the pinky finger. I can rest up, the, up this way, or come here, and up. And now I have this. Watch that again. 
So I move my body, grab the finger. If I go underneath here, I can just make him get taller. Or if I want to make him smaller, I come here. And I just bend this way. And of course, I have all sorts of other things I could be doing from here. Drop the foot, push him down, break the ankle, take off. So there, it's one move. Thinking about it as one move, it's that. Sure, in your own training, you can work this side, right? This hand. You can work that side, of course, for training, of course. But when you adopt your posture, that's your posture. This is it. I'm not, I'm not going to be jumping and changing. You know what I mean? So pick your side, whatever it is, and that's how you're going to stand all the time when you've got a threat in front of you. No need to change up. You know? Um, who is this? Um, Miyamoto Musashi, who, uh, Japan's most famous swordsman. In his book of five rings, he says, make your everyday stance your fighting stance, and your fighting stance your everyday stance. Okay, it's not nothing different. Everything's the same. Keep everything the same. It's simple. You don't have to try to remember too much stuff, right? Yeah. So let's say it's a a push, like that. Push. Ah! I still grab the finger. I trapped his hand there. Okay, so when he pushed me, I trapped his hand there. I want that hand so that I can get that finger, just the index finger. Then I do my low block. I go down and I go behind the back. Ah, grab the head, pull down, and now I can attack here, here, break this finger, push him away, finish. Yep. If he pushes with this hand, I trap again, but now I got the pinky finger again. And then I can come back to here. Still the same move. This. Good job.